So we've seen how to express concentrations in terms of conversion of A, especially for liquid phase reactions, and we're going to apply these to this exercise. A sub consists of a sodium and potassium salts, which is this sodium hydroxide and potassium salts everywhere, of various fatty acids such as oleic, starch, palmitic, lauric, and mystic acids. This saponification for this formation of soap from aqueous Okay, this is the aqueous caustic soda and the glyceryl stirate here. Let X be the conversion of this sodium hydroxide, this guy here. The moles of sodium hydroxide reacted per mole of sodium hydroxide initially present. Set up a stoichiometric table expressing the concentration of each species in terms of initial concentration. Okay, initial concentration of A and conversion of A. Nice. You can find this problem or exercise in this book, chapter number three. Let's do it. First thing first, we got this reaction. Three times A plus one mole of B will give you three moles of C and one mole of D. Since they are asking us to do it in the caustic soda or sodium hydroxide, we need to get rid of this three. So let's divide it by three, everything. We get one, one third, one, one third. Good. Now we are in liquid phase, so it's easier. We have, we don't need to mess with gases, and our volume is constant. Initial volume equals final volume, and I'm going to suppose it's a batch reactor because I have no clue. They don't tell you anything about what type of reactor it is, so I'm going to suppose it's a batch. So by definition, in the batch reactor, you know there's no inlet, no outlets, only accumulation yeah yeah only accumulation and consumption generation here so concentration at any moment is total amount of moles at any moment divided by volume initial concentration of a equals initial moles of a at initial amount of volume so just one thing i want to tell you here is that these volumes are the same because it's liquid phase now let's check this function out the h circle B, C, and D. It's just initial amount of uh, the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A, initial amount of concentration of C divided by the concentration of A at the beginning, and the same for D here. So you can see probably is this here divided by. So since the volumes are the same, probably you are asking yourself why. Are you using this definition if we tell or we were asking here? We got this before. This is the H circle function of any value. So why are we using concentrations? Because I just multiply and divide by volume. So you know this is definition of concentration and this is definition of concentration of A. So hopefully you don't get lost on why I use this rather than mold. It's the same because I'm divided by volume each of these, volume and volume. Mathematically it's one. So yeah, let's continue with this. Let's calculate this table. You know this table a little bit. So the initial amounts, we have them here, here, and here, and here as variables. The changes, well, this is A of A negative, which is one, and this is B divided by A. A, remember, is 3, B is 1, minus 1 third. This is C divided by A, is 1 divided by 1, it's positive 1 because it's A. These guys are products and these guys are reactants, so remember this is negative and this is positive. And, yeah, also 1 third because it's B divided by A. Now, uh, initial plus change will give you the final, so I got this and this and this and this. And since they are asking me to get the concentrations, well, we call just divide by volume here. Divide this by volume and you will get the concentration. Divide this by volume and you will get the concentration. Divide this by volume and you will get concentration. And divide this by volume and you get the concentration. And once again, we got this in terms of initial concentration of A, in terms of conversion of A, and this is the terms of 
or the reactant be product C and D, but we respect with the moles of A. So we are done. This will be the table that A, they ask us. They tell you to do a express these in conversions and where is it? Set up a stoichiometric table. And this is our stoichiometric table. So that's exercise three essentially. The only difference is we got this value here. This is one, this is one third. And yeah, that's everything, guys. See you in the next exercise. I will break it so you can understand it easily. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.